Well, would you have a look at that? Frankly, I have no words. And from the sounds of it, you're speechless too. I should mention it's the next day. Boy, time sure flies, don't it? Before you know it, we'll all be dead. Wow, sorry, that got dark fast. The oil, I mean. I applied some yesterday just for kicks and it's dried. That's why it looks darker than what you might've just seen on video. But would you have a look at that? I mean, a freaking robot did that. Just between me and you, if a real life human would have done this, well, I'd be on the phone with my lawyer and suing for damages. 10 bucks for a new handle and probably a hundred for hard to quantify emotional distress. Although that might look pretty cool and technically does indeed have a bit more grip. As far as checkering goes, this is pretty bad. However, I realized I made a few mistakes pretty much as they were happening. This is the first CNC checkering I've ever done and let's say I've learned some things. But here, mistakes were made. I made some bad decisions. You made some bad decisions. It was a perfect storm, really. For once, perhaps, it's not the robot's fault. Though I am impressed with the technical execution. I mean, check out how well it followed that surface. The offset is nearly flawless. And all the lines are straight. I mean, the lines that are meant to be straight. I marvel at the technology we have at our fingertips. It's hard sometimes to believe it takes us another 250 years to colonize Mars. Anyway, let's do a quick walkthrough of how the CNC machine did this, and I'll flag the two or three places I made bad decisions. Also, if the title alone brought you here, check out the video before this one, because I'm likely to miss some of the big picture details that we covered there. The first thing I needed was a checker pattern to put into this hammer, like a stencil, I guess. And that started out as a drawing on my computer. You could very well do this with a pencil and paper and scan it, but I went straight for the digital throat. Recall that the advantage of surface mapping is that we can work in 2D and never bother with 3D CAD. So I need a 2D drawing. If you look close, I have a rectangular underlay and sketchbook that's an inch tall by about four and a half inches wide. That's the patch size I want to checker on the hammer. I'm using the symmetry tool, so I only need to draw one corner and it'll ensure the pattern is consistent, or symmetric rather. As I was drawing, I decided to do the outline and the cross hatching as two different sketches. Like sketches on two different layers. We'll see that better once we move into Fusion. Two independent sketches, since I thought I wanted to control those separately once I got to the carving, but turned out it wasn't necessary. Next, I move those into Fusion 360. I made another rectangle, again, an inch by four and a half. Inserted my sketches and scaled them so they fit in the box. Over in the CAM tab, the manufacturing tab, I used 2D engraving and set up the same operation on both the sketches. One is for the inside checker pattern, the other is for the outline. Again, I did this because I thought I might want to drop the outline down a little deeper than the fill pattern, but it was fine as is. Though it's probably good that it's doing the outline as one continuous cut instead of jumping around like it might have if it was all one toolpath. Probably helped to make the outline cleaner, crisper. And here's where I realized huge mistake number one. I drew a crosshatch pattern the way a normal person would have, just crossing diagonal lines. But when I got it into Fusion, it quickly dawned on me that the engraved toolpath isn't going to use those lines the way I meant it to use those lines. If you look close, you'll see it just cut the area where the lines are. And since I have space between those lines, it's going to leave that untouched which means it won't fully develop the pyramid shapes we're expecting in knurling or checkering. There are no sharp points. I should have drawn the lines closer together or much thicker, like the drawn black lines thicker than the white space between them. That or I could make this engraving deeper, which would get me sharp points, but then it would mess up my perimeter. In the interest of time, I gave up and just figured I'd be happy with amateur looking flat topped checkering. If you're really looking to do this right, and I strongly suggest you do some experimenting before jumping into your granddad's shotgun. I'd recommend doing the whole drawing in 2D CAD. Or if the funny swoops are too hard, just do the outline as a drawing. Then after you import that in the CAD, do the crosshatch pattern as simple straight lines. That way you can adjust the spacing of those lines to get crisp points and control the ends so it doesn't cut into your perimeter. But anyway, here are the tool paths I got out of Fusion. This is the inside and this is the outside. Again, two separate G-code files from Fusion in case I wanted to tweak them independently. As before, notice they're 2D. They're flat. No fancy surfacing to get them onto the hammer handle. And just like we did in the last video, set up your workpiece and map the area you're interested in cutting. Then just run your 2D G-code. And that's it. Pretty darn fast, huh?
So problem number two, the cutting tool. Although it looks sharp, it's not really the right tool for this job. The features that we're trying to cut are smaller than the no point that's left on this thing. For this, we'd want something much sharper. And problem number three, spinning much faster. My mill won't go much over about 2800 RPM. That's fine for metal most of the time, but much too slow for wood. And speaking of which, problem number four, the handle itself. If you take a close look, well, it doesn't even have to be that close, but if you take a look at the original surface, it's pretty bad. This hammer is old, it's full of crud, oil, cracks, pits, blood, sweat, tears, lots of tears. And as soon as the bit hit the surface, it started throwing little pieces of wood everywhere. They were just chipping off ahead of the cutting load. I wager, just having done this same exact exercise in a better workpiece, some nice dense walnut maybe, it would have looked 10 times better. Still amateurish flat topped checkering, but a lot crisper than what we're seeing here. So there you have it. That's all I got. That was really fun to try. I'm glad y'all cyber bullied me into doing that. But this was an unscheduled impromptu video and my wife's been going on and on about something all morning. Something about feeding the kids, they're hungry, yada yada. So until next time, thanks for watching.